Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So you may or may not have seen my last video, which was me fast packing across the hills and the mountains of Wales, um, the Brecon Beacons, uh, towards the lakes of Lynn Fanny Fach and Lynn Fanny Forth, uh, where I spent a night solo wild camping. And basically I've had quite a few questions about my kit, uh, the kit that I used on that trip. So today I was just gonna go through my bag and show you what I took. Now I would add now that the kit that I took is Fairly, it's fairly on the basic side, I suppose, in terms of it's, you know, it's not the most expensive. There's a lot better kit out there if you've got the money. And I would also say that I made a couple of mistakes, um, which I'll get, in, get into as we go along. But let's start with the rucksack itself. So the rucksack that I took was the Osprey Talon 33, 33 litre backpack had this backpack for years and it's it's yeah it's not a bad backpack it's obviously um very durable i've had it for seven or eight years i'd say still working fine no problems at all uh, it's usually used as a day pack um, but i've taken it on a few wild camping trips and it's it's performed fine in terms of fast packing it's not designed for fast packing i suppose um, you're going to get a bit of bounce when you're running um, and there would be a couple of things that i would change in an ideal world so I find these straps a little bit thin for my shoulders. So I'd prefer those a little bit wider because they can start to dig in a bit if your pack's a bit heavy. And also it's got a nice hip belt, but on the hip belt we've got these pockets and these pockets um, are not very flexible really. So I can't even fit my phone in there. So I just use this for carrying food, um, which you know is good as well. But yeah, I prefer some slightly bigger stretchier pockets in the hip there. Now, as I say, I've had this pack for a quite, a, quite a few years, so maybe there's been some upgrades since then. I don't know, let me know if you know. But yeah, not a bad pack, and yeah, big enough to get, get all my gear in there. So, let's start going into what we've got in the pack. So in the front, so you've got this meshy pocket in the front. That's where I kept my mat, obviously easy to get out. That's where I kept a couple of dehydrated meals so one of the meals that i took was from this company firepot they're a uk company so i picked this because yeah it was just quite a small list of ingredients so uh, that always sits well with me it means there's not too many additives in fact it says on here no artificial additives so that's good so yeah i had the beef stew with pearl barley as my uh, evening meal which was nice and it's 780 calories so that was a decent amount of calories helped re replenish some of the energy that I'd, I'd burned during the day so yeah I took another one I took some porridge in fact for the morning uh, I've got my Sealy hat really flexible packs away really nicely I wore that most of the time to be honest with you Put these over here what else have we got in here anything All right that's it for there so in the side pockets where I suppose you traditionally you'd keep some water bottles, that's where I keep my um, waterproofs. I want my waterproofs nice, easy reach so I can get them out nice and quickly because um, if you've spent any time in the UK and in particular Wales, you know the weather can change like that. So yeah, I've got a nice pair of waterproof trousers. This is just a cheap pair from Regatta. Again, I've had these years, but they do the job. Really lightweight, obviously, packed down really small. And then the other side, I've got my waterproof jacket, which is just a North Face waterproof jacket. You know, not top of the range, but it's done, done the job for many a years for me. And let's open up the pack. Oh, in fact, let's go with this pocket on top first. So, a head torch. Definitely a bit of an, bit of an essential, I'd say, on a trip like this, take a head torch. Again, this is not top of the range. This is like, this is a silver, uh, I can't remember what the model is, Trail Runner 2 or something like that. Yeah. And in here as well, I kept my water filter system. So this is something that a few people have asked me about. Oh, and also hand sanitizer, sign of the times. Um, so yeah, so this soil water filter system. So obviously when you're out for a couple of days in the hills, away from civilization, it's very unlikely you're going to be able to take enough water with you um, unless you just want to be weighed down considerably with like five litres of water um, from the start of your trip. So you're going to have to replenish your water at some point. So one of the common ways of doing that is with these Sawyer water filters. 
So simply fill this squeeze bag up from a stream or something. Um, so I found one at the top of a hill. Um, filled it up through there, then you just connect, connect the water filter, squeeze the water through, and uh, yeah, water's filtered. Gets rid of 99.99% of bacteria or something like that. So that's good. So the, the way I carry my water with me, I actually use a hydration bladder. Now, a lot of people go with using the bottle route and you can also have bottles with a filter attached to them. Uh, maybe that's something I'll look into in the future. But I do quite like having a bladder with me because this, this tubing is obviously sitting in front of you the whole time. So it's a kind of a reminder to keep drinking. And I just think if my bottles were kind of tucked into my bag, there's sort of a higher chance that I, you know, I, might, I might start to suffer with a bit of dehydration. So yeah, I, I like to have a nice bladder system, to be honest with you. Um, this is a lightweight um, hydration bladder from Osprey, pretty good quality. So yeah, that worked really well. So that's a two and a half litre version. So I took two and a half litres and I filled up two and a half litres and that was it for, for my trip. That's all I needed. Uh, anything else in this pocket? No. So let's see what's in this pocket. Now there's a couple of things that I forgot to pack, um, which would have been a bit of a disaster on my actual trip. Um, for this dem demonstration, I've forgotten my spork, which is essential, obviously. Um, yeah, spork, a spoon fork, so to eat my meals. And also my little mini first aid kit I haven't put in here. So yeah, I take a first aid kit, also take a space blanket. These weigh nothing. Um, I mean, it was summer, so it was probably very unlikely I was ever gonna need that, but you never know. Um, a couple of hand sanitizer wipes and some toilet roll. And a couple of plastic bags, rubbish and things. <laughs> so into the main compartment. So let's start with the tent. This is my tent. So it's a one man tent. So this is the Van Gogh Soul 100. Now this super cheap one man tent. I think you can get this for like 40 pounds off Amazon. Um, and for 40 pounds, it's pretty good. It definitely does have its drawbacks. It's quite snug. It's pretty small, to be honest with you. Um, I'm 6'1", and yeah, my head sort of touches touches the side a little bit. So it's not ideal. Um, but yeah, 40 pounds, not bad. Not bad. Flaps around a bit, bit in the wind as well, a bit annoying. But yeah, in the future, it'll be something I will definitely like to upgrade. Um, for weight and size purposes as well. This is nearly two kilograms. And you can get one man tents now that are under a, under a kilogram. So yeah, in the future, I can definitely save some weight and some si um, some space by upgrading my tent. But yeah, they ain't cheap. They ain't cheap. Um, now this is where I went wrong. Um, so I have two sleeping bags. I've got a synthetic bag, which is good for like down to minus six or something like that. Um, or I have a summer bag, but when I say summer bag, it's kind of like for hot summer nights. So I actually bought this bag or was given this as a gift years ago for uh, my trip when I went to Australia. Um, so yeah, it doesn't provide, it doesn't really provide any warmth to be honest with you. The problem with my synthetic bag is it's probably about this big and took up three quarters of this bag. So in my rucksack. So I decided to take the summer bag which was a bit of an error because it meant for a bit of a cold night's sleep in the end. So yeah, this is what I took. This is the Snug Pack Travel Pack 500 Comfort Summer Low Summer. Yeah, chilly summer's night in Wales. No, not comfortable. So yeah, that is something I'm going to have to upgrade sooner than the tent. To be honest with you, I need a nice down sleeping bag that's packs down small and is nice and lightweight but also good when it gets cold because yeah not doing another night in that so my next trip I think it's going to be a bit too soon to save up the bunts for a new sleeping bag so I'm going to have to try and take my synthetic bag and the way I pack this uh, rucksack is going to be a bit different I think I'm going to have to try and strap parts of the tent to the outside we'll see anyway 
Oh, I should add, all, all of this stuff coming out now, after the tent is packed away in a dry bag, because obviously the rucksack is not fully waterproof. Well, it's not waterproof, so it's good to pack anything. You don't want to get wet in a dry bag, so I've just got a nice big dry bag in here. Um, I bought a towel, a travel towel. This was a bit of a waste of space in the end, although it's not very big, pretty light. But I took this because um, I was planning on potentially having a swim in the, one of the lakes. Um, but yeah, I chose not to because I was getting a bit cold and I knew I didn't really have the gear to back it up if I got really cold. So I didn't have a swim. I did wash my legs and used it to dry me off. So I suppose it wasn't a complete waste. And my cook system. This is the MSR Pocket Rocket 2. Really lightweight, really compact. So it comes in a little mesh bag. And in that bag, so the pot comes with a nice lid. And here's got the stove itself. You just leave these fold out. Really neat. Good little bit of kit, that. Good bit of kit. Uh, the grabber. This is obviously to lift a, a hot pot lighter so this all fits in this this pot which is good so it packs away nice and small and also you can get a um, little gas canister in there and at the bottom on the bottom a mug so you have a nice cup of char as well which i did have a nice warm nice warm cup of char but yeah and then your aluminium pot so yeah that's good that works well make sure that you're shielded from the wind otherwise the boiling can take quite a long time but otherwise it's quite efficient if you're out of the wind. And so getting into more of the sleep system here. So this is the sleeping mat that I, I used. So this is the Trekology ultralight sleeping mat. And yeah, this is a bit of a bargain, this bit kit actually. So it's just over 40 pounds from Amazon. Look how small that is, really lightweight, comfortable. Doesn't pair particularly well with this tent because this tent being quite small and snug, this is actually quite a um, thick mat. So it pushes you up towards those slopes of the walls a little bit. Um, and also this is quite long as well, um, a bit too long for this tent. So they don't go brilliantly together, but it's comfortable, bargain. Um, it's not rated that highly for cold weather. So it's definitely not good for the winter. Um, it'll probably be fine for most of the, the autumn and the spring as long as it's not too much of a cold night but yeah for the money just over 40 pounds not bad not bad at all um, and also to go with that trekology pillow this is the aluft pillow 2.0 packs down really small really light i mean i'm sure there's comfier pillows out there but for the size the weight and the price this is like 12 pounds from Amazon again. Um, I don't think you can beat it. Been rated, it is rated quite highly by a lot of people. I don't, you don't lie on it and think, oh, that's, that's a comfortable pillow, that. But definitely beats having no pillow. Well, that's just miserable. I've done that before. Um, and then in the bottom here, we've got my clothes. So these aren't packed away particularly neatly at the moment, but. So yeah, just an ultra, uh, a lightweight fleece. Um, yeah, pretty standard. It's the Berghaus one, had it for years. Um, here's another mistake. So I took these cold, uh, Subsports cold weather gear leggings. These are quite good at keeping you warm in the cold weather when you're moving around, when you're being active. But when you're sort of sitting still, standing still, there's a cold breeze. It's cold, not great. And I didn't find them very warm in my sleeping sleeping bag, sleeping sheet um, either. So yeah, I need to uh, invest in some merino wool versions of these really, I think. Um, in the past, I've taken you know thicker trousers and stuff, but I was just trying to go as lightweight as possible on this trip. So yeah, not great, but I guess, Again, better than nothing, I suppose. Um, woolen socks, yeah, a bit of an essential. So yeah, I wore these, wore these at night and in the morning, hiking out. 
Um, and then what have we got left? I think this is it. Yeah, and then I've got a merino wool long sleeve Ellie Hansen top. So these are really good. These keep you warm. Um, and you also don't over overheat if it gets warm when you're exercising. So yeah, this is a good good bit of kit, this one. Um, and here on my wrist here, I've got a, uh, a buff. I took a buff with me. Not much to say about this, really. Yeah, pretty useful. Uh, I actually use this as a sleeping, uh, I actually use this as, as a um, pillowcase. That's the word I'm looking for. Use this as a pillowcase as well. So it doubles up as that, a little bit of a tip for you. And that's about it, really. That is my kit. So yeah, a few mistakes made, a few upgrades needed at some point. Um, but yeah, if, all in all, it, my bag came in at just under eight kilograms. So certainly not super lightweight, but yeah, you know, I've got a tent there that's two kilograms um, and a few other things that can, can be reduced as well, I think. But yeah, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll try and link as much of the kit as I can down below. Um, if you haven't watched the video from when I went fast packing in Wales, um, go and do that. You might enjoy it. I've had some good, uh, good comments about that video. I really enjoyed making it as well. Let me know what you think if you do watch it. Um, and also want you to comment below any kit recommendations. There's a few sleeping bags that I'm looking at, a few down sleeping bags that I'm looking at. Um, but yeah, let me know if you've got any particularly good, good sleeping bags to recommend. And that's about it for today. So I'm going to catch you in another video. Plenty more videos to come. Thanks for watching. See you later.